This is one of my favorite questions because it tests your analytical skills as well as your abilities to identify sequences. You're presented with the series of numbers and you need to identify the pattern and select the option that completes the series. Take a close look at the numbers. The numbers are 2, 5, 9, 14 and 20 in the first row. Second row is 3, 6, 10, 15 and 21. The third row is 4, 8, 13, 19 and 26. And last but not least, the fourth row has the series of numbers 1, 2, 4, 7, 11 and then comes the missing number. You need to detect the pattern and select the missing number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 23. And last but not least, choice D, 18. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Because I already found my solution, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The key to solve these types of challenges is obviously to identify the pattern and not to overthink it. If we look at the series of numbers, we have four independent rows and each row represents an independent sequence which follows the same pattern. So what is the pattern? And the pattern here is rather simple. The next number is calculated as previous number plus the increment. An increment increases by one with each subsequent number. Let's look at the example on how calculations are done for the first row of numbers. In the first calculation, the increment is 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Then increment increases by 1 and from 3 becomes 4, which means 5 plus 4 equals 9. Then increment increases again and 9 plus 5 equals 14. 14 plus 6 equals 20. I'm going to skip rows 2 and 3 so you can do calculations independently to practice your skills but I am going to do the calculations for the last row. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Increment increases by 1, so 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 7 plus 4 equals 11. And last calculation, 11 plus 5 equals 16. So the correct answer here is choice A, 16. Did you get to the same answer? If not, maybe you have a better way to solve it, so please make sure to post and comment so we can all learn. Here's an amazing question to test your critical thinking and analytical skills. When requesting clearance for takeoff from air traffic control ATC, which critical information should a pilot provide? You're presented with four possible choices. Choice A, aircraft ID, number of passengers and amount of fuel. Choice B, flight number and flight destination. Choice C, aircraft type, call sign and departure runway. And last but not least, choice D, departure runway, pilot and co-pilot names, and number of crew members on board. Take a close look to see if you can select your answer. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. It's a tricky question and answer here is not obvious. But let's look at each individual choice to determine if it is correct. Let's start with the choice A provide aircraft ID number, number of passengers, and amount of fuel. This is very important information and it's essential for pilot to have it on hand, especially for operational purposes and safety. But this information is not typically provided to air traffic control during takeoff. Choice B, flight number and flight destination are essential for overall flight planning and coordination but typically not part of the initial information provided for the takeoff request. Let's look at choice D, departure runway, pilot and copilot names, and number of crew members on board. What's interesting about this answer is that departure runway is part of the correct answer. However, pilot and copilot names and number of crew members on board typically are not part of the information shared with ATC during takeoff clearance requests. This leads us to the correct answer. When requesting clearance for takeoff from air traffic control, a pilot should provide the following crucial information. Aircraft type, call sign, and departure runway. Aircraft type is important for ATC to understand the performance characteristics of the aircraft and provide appropriate separation instructions. The aircraft's call sign or flight number is crucial for ATC to identify and communicate with the specific aircraft 
making the request. It helps air traffic control manage and track the aircraft throughout the flight. And specifying the intended departure runway is essential, especially at busy airports with multiple runways. This allows air traffic control to coordinate departures and arrivals effectively, ensuring safe separation between aircrafts. So the correct answer here is choice C, aircraft type, call sign, and departure runway. Did you come up with the different answer? If you did, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. As you might have guessed, this video is full of surprises. This is why I have a surprise question for you. Take a close look at the series of numbers and determine which one logically completes the series. The numbers are 5, 10, 20, 40, and then comes the missing number, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 100. Choice B, 80. Choice C, 50. And last but not least, choice D, 60. The answer is rather easy once you detect the pattern. And I have full confidence that as a subscriber or future subscriber to this channel, you will be able to do it. Are you ready? Once you're done answering this question, make sure to post it in comment section of this video so I can share with you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. What's interesting about the question I'm about to present you is that it truly tests your analytical skills. You need to determine which number comes next in the sequence and you're presented with the sequence of six numbers where seventh number is missing. The sequence is 23, 11, 20, 12, 18, 14, and then comes the missing number, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17, choice B, 16, choice C, 22, and last but not least, choice D, 20. Take a close look maybe do mental math calculations to see if you can come up with the answer. Seems unsolvable, isn't it? But be sure that the answer will look so simple as soon as I reveal it, just like in the magic trick. Maybe give yourself additional 15 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? Because on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. If you are a frequent visitor or a subscriber to this channel, you know the rule, and rule is to find the pattern. But in this particular question, there are two independent patterns. Let's look closely so I can share them with you. The numbers 23, 20, 18, and 17 represent first pattern. And the next number is calculated by subtracting decrementing number from the previous number. Let's look at the example. 23 minus 3 equals 20. 20 minus 2 equals 18. You see that the 3 is decremented by 1 to get to 2. The next number is calculated as 18 minus 1, which is decrement from 2, equals 17. The even numbers 11, 12, 14, and then the missing number are calculated using the different pattern. In fact, the opposite pattern, where instead of decrement, we use increment. Let's look at the examples. 11 plus 1 equals 12. Then we increase 1 by additional number, and we increment 12 by 2, which leads us to a result of 14. Then the next number, the missing number, is calculated as 14 plus 3, which would be equal to 17. So the correct answer here is choice A, 17. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here is an amazing question with the answer that will definitely surprise you. You're presented with the circle, broken down into the eight parts. Each part has letters inside, and letters are O, S, then comes the missing letter, T, another missing letter, O, another missing letter, and adds in P. You need to complete the object by selecting the choice of three grouped letters. Choice A is represented by letters I, I, E. Choice B is represented by letters T, I, N. Choice C is represented by letters E, I, N. And last but not least, choice D is formed by the letters of I, I, N. Take a close look to see if you can complete the object. I am going to give you a quick hint to help you solve it. Take a close look what happens if you move clockwise. I am pretty sure you are by now, so I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. 
What's interesting about this question is how amazingly simple the solution is. If we start with the letter P, we can form a word position. Let me spell it for you. P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. Let me pinpoint three considerations that will help you solve these types of problems on the test. When you look at the question, the question is complete the object and letters are the choices which most of the time would mean that you need to form the word. Circle shape in the original question mimics the clock, which a lot of times mean that you need to select the direction, which could be clockwise or counterclockwise. To solve these types of challenges, you typically need to look at consecutive letters that are already present. So the three consecutive letters that are present are POS, which would kick off your thinking about the word position. As you might have guessed by now, the correct choice here is choice D, letters I, I, N, which help you to form the word position. Did you come up with the different answer? Or maybe you have other tips on how to solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to post in comments. What I like about this question is that it tells you how well you can do mental calculations. Let's take a close look. 041 is the closest decimal approximation for which of the following fractions? And you're presented with four choices of fractions. Choice A, one half. Choice B, two fifth. Choice C, three eighth. And last but not least, choice D, five twelfth. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I am ready to present you with my analysis and my answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. So let's take a close look. To determine the closest approximation, we need to calculate the decimal equivalents for each fraction and then compare them to 0.41. So let's do it for each choice, choice A, B, C, and D. For choice A, 1 half is equal to 0.5. For choice B, the decimal equivalent for 2 fifths is 0.4. For choice C, the decimal equivalent of 3 eighths is 0.375. And for choice D, for 512, the decimal equivalent is 0 0.41666, and then it's repeating for 67. And then in the last step, we need to compare all these decimal equivalents to 0 0.41. So from my standpoint, the closest decimal approximation to 0 0.41 among the given fractions is choice D, 512. And that's because the result of the calculations, 0.41666667, is the closest to 0.41 when rounded to two decimal places. So the correct answer here is QSD 512. I love this question because it truly tests your logical thinking and analytical skills. You're presented with the series of numbers, and you need to determine which one of the following numbers logically completes the series. The numbers are 5, 10, 20, 40, and then comes the missing number, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 100. Choice B, 80. Choice C, 50. And last but not least, choice D, 60. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can get to the answer. I think I know what my answer is going to be, so I'm moving forward to share with you my solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments so we can all learn. To answer this question correctly, you need to detect the pattern. And each number in the sequence is obtained by doubling the previous number. Let's take a look. The first number is 5, and 10 is calculated as double of 5. 5 multiplied by 2 equals 10. 20 is a double of 10, which is calculated as 10 by 2, which is equals 20. 40 is a double of 20, and it's calculated as 20 multiplied by 2 equals 40. So to find the missing number, we'll just need to continue the pattern. 40 multiplied by 2 equals 80. So the correct answer here is choice B, 80. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. 
You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.